Hey everybody, Daryl O'Bear. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So this Monday is a little bit different than, than other Mondays. Um, we're going to be talking about another artist today. So I've been slammed at work getting ready for our next big thing, and in the middle of all that, I had the opportunity to um, work with another artist called Janet Eckelman, and she does these awesome sculptures that are the size of buildings, these installations all over the world. And this one actually just went up this weekend. This is at the TED conference that's being held in Vancouver this week, where Janet was lecturing about her journey as an artist. Um, if you haven't heard of her, Google her, go to TED, pick up her lecture. It's actually really inspirational to hear, you know, what she went through to to um, become an artist. And here she is, you know, doing things on the world scale, making these amazing installations for everyone to enjoy. So the reason that I'm involved is because she approached Autodesk um, looking to get some assistance in tools to visualize her her craft. And we were able to provide her a plugin inside of Maya that allows her to build and simulate these nets in a very realistic manner, actually evaluate the stress on them, and ultimately get um, plans or docs out of Maya's plugin that they built, the consulting services group built, to uh, to help in the construction aspect, in the ordering, and the processing of sort of you know getting this to be a product. So it really is a pretty uh, pretty cool tool that they ended up making for her to allow her to start doing her her prototyping digitally. So we'll just kind of click through a few of these pictures, and you can get a sense of you know the overall scale of this. So it's obviously this net netting that's then draped from all these different cables, and they look really cool, especially at night when they get lit up. And she's done these all over the world. You know, I've seen I've seen uh, her other installations, and they're all unique and beautiful. And you know, I think they really shine at night. We'll kind of scroll back here and go to some of the other ones on the beginning of this, so you can get a sense of what these guys look like. So it's just netting, just done on a really big scale. So it's super cool. So let's go ahead and jump into Maya. Um, and we'll talk about the plugin real fast and just give you an overall sense of what it's like working inside this plugin. So again, this is just a tool that was made um, by the consulting services group for her. It actually doesn't use any of the Maya dynamic systems. It's it's a, it's its own unique engine um, and construction tool. And it basically has all the different tools that they're used to using or all the different kind of commands and functions that they're used to doing in the real world. So, um, you know, they, they've kind of perfected the art of building these nets before they had digital prototyping. So they really wanted to get a set of tools inside of Maya that actually captured, you know, sort of the way they approach it in the real world. And that's that's what this plugin does. So it allows you to, in the simplest form, select curves and join them together and create panels from those. So that's a mesh. That's actually a meshing that's been made for me. We could specify the parameters over here, or we could just start to increase the resolution, you know, get something that's a little bit higher. So with that done, we can go ahead and select one of these panel edges. We'll just grab that one, and what we're going to do is we're just going to pin that in space. So now if we play this back, what's going to happen is the simulation will kind of come down, it sort of unrolls and basically does what it would do if it was actually uh, a physical object in the real world. So let's go ahead and just reset our net, and We'll add in another panel over here, or another panel edge. So again, we'll just take that and we'll pin it in space onto that rail. We'll go back to our playhead here and we'll play this back. So you can see now what it drops, it looks very similar to what we were looking at um, in those photographs, right? This, this really captures the look and feel of what that's doing. Now, obviously, this is a lower res as far as a number of uh, a number of curves going into it, but you get a sense of what the tool does. Some other things that the tool has is it has the ability to uh, to evaluate the stress on it. You can sort of adjust where that color range is going. So this is going to show you the areas that are underneath the most strain. So it gives them sort of this you know visualization tool that allows them to make decisions about maybe making modifications to the overall underlying structure of the net to relieve some of the strain or stress where they know that they might have some problems and things like that. So let me show you what the end result is that I assisted her with. So this was just basically um, a little bit of animation that was a B-roll behind her as she was giving her, her talk to uh, to the TED guy. So we went through several different versions to get to the end result. This was um, this was an earlier one. So we'll just play this back. So we're kind of, uh, this is obviously Vancouver. It's the same site model, kind of blocking model. So we kind of just zoom in here, build a couple panels. Add, uh, add in some sub panels to it. So we're subdividing the panel into a bunch of chunks, 
turning on the original mesh, and this is the actual mesh that was uh, their sim mesh or their prototyping mesh, and little camera move kind of coming down and parking. So that one was done in viewport one, um, so we could show the interactive tool. And this isn't the one that she actually ended up using in her in her talk. The one that she ended up using was oops, looks like I closed that window down. Bear with me while I open that window back up. And this was the one that we ended up going with. So just kind of popping on. It's a little simpler than the last one. And this one's actually rendered off in viewport 2.0. And the interesting thing about this is it has the ability to to mesh the the curves. And what I did is I took that mesh and I actually turned it into an Olympic cache and sent that out. So it made it a little easier for it to work with. So that's what we're looking at here is the actual rendering of the mesh geometry. And you can see, you know, viewport 2.0 is doing a great job for for something. This is just super fine mesh. The ambient occlusion kicks on. It gives us that sort of nice, uh, nice look and sort of this almost x ray sort of facing ratio effect that happens from all those curves stacking up on top of each other. Just gives it this nice ethereal look that actually is, is sort of, you know, really similar to what the nets actually look like. So that's how we ended up doing this guy. And that, that Olympic cache was something like 27 gigs. It was, it was a pretty big file for something that's just on screen for only a few minutes here. So that's basically it for this Maya Monday. Again, I'd like to uh, thank Janet Eckelman for giving me the opportunity to work with her. Her and all of her crew up in Boston were absolutely amazing to work with. And, you know, they're, they're turning out stuff that is really, really unique and using Maya to help them along the way. So hopefully you guys um, enjoyed this and this week should be, uh, should be pretty awesome. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Take it easy.